Should you leave Skeeter pea laying around for one year before you taste it? Let's find out. This is our Skeeter pea. It took us forever to actually make this. We just never got around to it. Uh, it is 1.012 final gravity, so it's semi-sweet, and it is 12.77%, and it's a year old. But now we gotta get it from here into these. And for that, we need the, the pork can. can. There is a bit of sediment in the bottom of this bottle, but I believe this is before we were doing our extended remix version of pre-bottling aging, which we have implemented now. And if you want a clearer bottle, I highly recommend doing it. Yeah, usually like after we pasteurize or something or after we do a tasting, we let it sit in the bottle for usually a month, sometimes more. And by the bottle, he means the fermenter, the fermenter. before transferring it to its final right. bottle. And then we bottle. And then, you know, a year later, we taste them. But uh, here we are. So clarity, it's like a six to a seven. It's not great, but it's not like you can totally see right through it. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Um, somebody asked if we could show a light through it. Hold on one second. Just happen to have a light that does that. Ooh, it's probably too bright. Super bright. I know a cell phone does it too, but this is actually controllable. Like I can vary the amount so you can see. It's not a hundred percent clear, but it's not bad. I stick my finger in between the. You light. put your finger in there. It doesn't. Oh, well, there. Yeah, you can see your finger. There you go. <laughs> How's that? Does that help? I don't know if that helps or not. <laughs> Find out when I edit this. Okay. But anyway, on the smell, definitely get some lemon, some alcohol. It, it smells like alcoholic lemonade. It's lemon pledge. That's basically. No, it's better than lemon pledge. <laughs> definitely alcoholic lemonade, though. I'm gonna smell. Yep. She's not thrilled. I'm not I'm not happy about this. <laughs> I'm going in. Much more pleasant on this on the flavor. Mm. It actually tastes really nice. It's like a lemon wine, really. A little a little bit more tangy. It definitely has that like you know lemonade has a tang to it. So it's like sweet and tangy. That's exactly what this is. Yeah, it's interesting. Um on the forward part, I almost get a kind of a floral sensation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Which is, I'm not, I'm not sure where that's coming from, but it, it's, it is interesting. And in the end, when I, I'm finishing, I, I get more of the sharp, lemony. Yeah. This is not a complex beverage by any means. But it's more complicated than I would anticipate. Just right. But what it does, it does really well. Yeah, yeah. You know, on the entrance, you have. A little bit of the aromatics coming in, like she's saying, that floral thing. And then the lemon hits you, and it's it's a nice lemon. It's like a tangy lemon, not like that super astringent, like, makes you go, you know, when you bite into a lemon. It's not like that at all. And then the sweetness starts to come through, and then the tang comes out, and it's like, makes you kind of want to go, you know? Yeah. Works like a tannin, tannic effect in the mouth, but it's actually not tannins. It's actually the uh, astringency of the lemon itself. I'm, I'm also eating a nice... I don't remember what other video I mentioned this in, but a softness in the mouth. Like yeah, it you've feels said that a couple times. Soft on my palate, so mm. it's not the the puckering dryness of a, a, a tannic thing. It just kind of feels soft. I don't know how to how else to express it, well, that. Well, it's not it's not overly acidic. So it's not sharp on the mouth. I think that might be what you're getting. You know, sharp versus soft. Right, but it doesn't feel water, watery. Oh, like, no, I no, no, feel no, 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 no. No, it's not watery. A sensation, and it too, the only words I can use are soft. I, I think I kind of get what you're saying. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely the acidity of the lemon has gone down. It's not, it's mm -hmm. not a strong lemony acidity. Honestly, this is way better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I just, I figured, okay, oh, most yeah. most people drink this young. I was not looking forward to this at all. Yeah. I'm not feeling 100% today, so that kind of compounded my hesitation, but... It tastes a lot sweeter than 1.012. It does. It's, it's, I'm trying to verbalize my sensations here. And it's almost 13%. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty strong stuff. I, I, I can see throwing this, like, over a couple of ice cubes. It kind of reminds me of the 
hardened versions of drinks. Like hard like lemonade. Hard lemonade. Yeah, it's very much like that. Which I know, duh, Derica, you basically made a hard lemonade. Okay, sure. But I'm surprised that something named Skeeter Pea, uh, which, why did they name it that? I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, a lemon wine would be this refreshing and enjoyable and pleasant and not harsh. Like, I was yeah. I was expecting this to be aggressive and just kind of grab me and shake me around, and I wasn't going to be happy about it. I'm not getting that at all. It's it's kind of chill and relaxing. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I wanted to tell you about the City Setting VIP Club. It's a super friendly bunch of brewers who get together and constantly help each other and share information. A large part of it is our private Facebook group where you can ask questions and get help. We also have Zoom meetings monthly for most tiers of membership. These hangouts are a great way to ask questions or just hang out with us and the other members. In addition, the higher tiers get their names right in our videos. So consider becoming a VIP. Now back to the video. What's really interesting is like you have the Mike's hard lemonade and stuff like that. I don't actually like those. I don't like them at all. They, I taste too much of the ethanol, too, it's too alcohol forward and not enough lemon. And the lemon is just a little harsh for me. It's been years since I've had one, but that's what I thought of when I was thinking of this. Mm -hmm. This is so totally different. This, to me, this is a wine. This is an enjoyable wine, not like just a, a hard alcohol drink in a can. It, it doesn't come across that way. It's actually much more elevated than that. And I, I hate to call it Skeeter pee anymore. Right. Because that just doesn't really define it very well. This is lemon wine now. Yeah. From here forth, from here forth, it will be to lemon, lemon wine. wine. It's just, it's lovely. You definitely know there's alcohol. There's definitely mm. a little bit of an ethanol flavor there, but the sweetness and the lemon comes through so nice. You know, it's only a few notes, but those are good notes. They are good notes. I appreciate those notes. To those that don't know what we mean by notes, when you're tasting something, your brain is trying to fill in blanks for what it's it's tasting and using your memories and your experiences of things that you've had before to fill in the blanks and make it make sense to you. Yeah. So that's why we're getting a floral note in here. Yeah. I don't believe we ever added flowers. I don't think there's anything in here that has flowers in it whatsoever. Right. If this was a lemon mead, then I'd be like, oh, look, that floral note's coming from the honey. But this isn't a lemon mead. We didn't add any honey to this. So, right. so those floral oh. notes are our brains saying, this is a floral note. What is it caused by? Esters from the yeast various things that are already in the lemons, the way things broke down and went back together during the aging process, all those things. There's no actual flowers, but we taste it because that's what the brain says. I'm familiar with that smell or that taste. It's flowers. That's why you're tasting that. And that's what esters and flavors and things like that all do. All the notes and uh, that kind of thing in a tasting, that's what all it's from. That That's exactly what it is. I think the sensations I'm getting are similar to when I make a, a, a super quick cheater cocktail, like a cranberry and vodka or a, all these lemonade and sure. vodka. It's, it's just, it's kind of simple, but sophisticated at the same time. And I know that's an oxymoron, <laughs> I apologize. Um, but it's, it's nice. It's comforting. It's not aggressive. Oh, yeah. It's none of the things I was anticipating it was going to be. <laughs> I'm really appreciating that right now. I was sort of thinking over the year this was going to fall apart. Because, like I say, it's something that's normally drank young. I wonder if because it's 12% is why it went better, because mm. it needed that age. I, I remember a little bit about this when it was younger. It was a little rough around the edges. It was a little harsh. Yeah. And I think I said, this is going to be great in a year. <laughs> A prediction came true. This yeah. is so much better. Itchy nose. Glad we're not actually brewing right now. I probably have a cat hair up there somewhere. <laughs> <sighs> I know. Things that you hear from YouTubers, <laughs> right? Like, you really needed that. But you explains why I'm doing this all the time. <sighs> <sighs> Do you need to take a moment? No, are, I'm fine. Are you okay? The show must go on. <laughs> Jeez. It's not as itchy. Got like one mustache hair turned around backwards or something. 
I'll have to take your word on that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot more to add to this. Other than this is one of those, I could put it in a glass with ice, which I know that's kind of a sacrilegious thing, but in this case, I could see that happening. It wouldn't weaken it so much. It's got a very strong flavor. Very, it's very lemon and strong flavored. So a little ice wouldn't hurt. And normally I jump on the ice bandwagon rather quickly, but for me, I think I would just leave it as is. I'm not saying it needs ice. Sure. I'm saying I can see sure. doing that with this. Yeah. Uh, I just have concerns that it might dilute the flavor profile too it much. Could. That it'd be just kind of like, eh. One ice cube. Eh. All right. Just, just. All right. I'm basically saying the chill, this might be. Might sure. be really nice. Sure. I think chilled it would be a little bit better. Keep in mind, we do all of our tastings at room temperature because we're acting as if we have no idea what this is, other than what it says on the label. Unless they're carbonated, then they're always chilled. Right, carbonated is always chilled. But we don't go back and watch the original videos on purpose. And a lot of people have had suggestions on how we can incorporate that. It's These videos get long as it is, and we babble, and we go off the rails. We don't need more off the rail things to go off yeah. the rails from yes. to be off the. But if you go off the rails far enough, do you come back onto the rails? I, I think that is a possibility. We have not succeeded in that <laughs> very yet. Usually, it's like, "Wow, we started here and now we're here. How much further do we need to go before we get back to here again?" All the way. Around. Yeah. All the way around. We we have yet to do that. I, one of these days, we'll just turn the camera on and talk for like thirty six hours straight and see what happens. Oh, gosh, no. I could do it. No. I could totally do it. No. No? No. I think you guys would probably get bored of hearing me talk after 36 hours. All right. So I would get bored of hearing me talk. back to Lemon Wine, because we've changed its name. See, we're off the rails. I, I need more. I feel like my basic uh, flavor profiles would be what we've already said. So we get the floral and the sweet and the lemon and the, the softness and the little after effect of the alcohol. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel alcohol forward to me. No, it really doesn't. I mean, you know it's there. Yeah, but it's more like, oh yeah, and by the way, I'm alcoholic. Oh, okay. Why, thank you. Not, she did not say I'm, I'm an alcoholic. I, I was, She's talking, I was about, talking, yeah. I was, I was. I would actually, wine. can we show them some of the sediment inside? I, we normally don't show you this kind of thing, but a, a few people have asked. They have stuff in the bottom of their bottles. They want to know if it was okay. So let me show you what this looks like so that right. you know what I'm talking about. Right, yeah. We're trying to be more oh. transparent. I don't know how much more transparent we could be. Inclusive. All right, so this is what we're talking about with some of the sediment in the bottom of this bottle. There's a thin film or a coating, and then there's like a few blobs and bits floating around. That is just stuff that came out of fermentation and just from sitting. So that's not harmful. I mean, yeah. technically, you can drink that. I don't particularly care to, so we pour really, really carefully, and right. it will settle back down. The style of the bottle where they have the slope neck like this is actually designed on purpose to help eliminate that getting into your glass. So yeah. if you do a delicate pour, then it'll get trapped in this area and the clear stuff will... You probably saw the way I poured it. Yeah. That's the way to do it. And you just keep that angle when you go to the next glass. Yeah. Never let it glug. If yeah, it you glugs, don't want to that's where those things happen. Because then it'll all get mixed Sometimes up. for the pour cam, she has to be a little bit rougher with it to get the angles and all yeah. that. So that's why some of that sediment broke off. But I did notice when I was pouring that only the part that came off was actually loose. The rest of it is pretty hard packed. So the way to avoid that is like what we said, let it age some in the primary or the whatever your fermenter. last fermenter was. Uh, so that way it has some time for mm. any of the particulates to bind together and fall out. And that's what happens is, is when you're aging, more particles are binding together and mm. they get heavy because they're, they're a bigger mass now and then they fall to the bottom. It's... It's just how things work. It's not anything bad. Now, the caveat to that is if you end up with some of this floating on the top, and that's when you might want to be concerned, but you do have to investigate that stuff as well and see what it actually is. If it's fuzzy and odd colors, then yeah, you have a problem. If it winks at you when you look at it, you probably want to pick that <laughs> bottle up. Just saying. The other thing I wanted to say, too, is okay. even if you let it sit for a long time before you bottle, there's still going to be a little bit of sediment falling out. All wines, even commercial wines, after a while, 
things fall out. It's just the natural way. Like she was saying, mm -hmm. compounds are from constantly being formed and broken up and formed and broken up. And that just causes more sediment to fall out. Right. If you purchase a commercial wine and you drink it at home, when you get to the end of the bottle, you will notice that there's normally some stuff in the bottom. That's the same thing. It's the same stuff we Actually, have. Actually, the finer the wine, the more stuff probably, because that yep. means they didn't use a lot of filtration and things yep. like that. And an older wine is going to have more than a younger wine. Yep. It's just the way it is. Yep. And that's just great particulate. <laughs> right. So we have to put a score on this. Yes, we do. And this is just a pure enjoyment score. Just what do we think of it? Mm -hmm. um, I'm debating between like four numbers. Let me go over our scoring system. Our scoring system goes one through 10 with the occasional 11. One means it's crap. We didn't like it at all. We'd probably dump it and then tell you a story about it. Five is you're going through your shelf and you go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh, that one. Yeah, let's have that. You didn't think of it, but once you saw it, you went, oh yeah, that's all right. 10 is the one that you go, I want to drink something like the great Karnak. I want to drink something. <laughs> what is it? And you think of that particular brew and now you're looking for that brew. And 11 is a 10 on steroids. There you go. Uh, so I'm having problems narrowing down what number I want to give this because I had some expectations going into this as I've already shared with you and this has far surpassed those expectations. So that pushes me to want to elevate my, sto my score. And I don't know if I'm falsely elevating it due to my pleasant surprise, or if I'm truly giving it the right score. That is part of why we talk so much during these. It's giving our, our palates and our brains a little chance to think and work through this. Because initial impression of a sip, you go, oh, this is amazing. And then after you live with it for a while, you might go, mm, I don't know about this one. This is one of those that living with it for a while may change your opinion of it. You know, kind of like a lot of things. <laughs> hey, 13 years, she's still with me. Just saying. Um, Do you have a score? I, I think so. Do you? I'm debating between two numbers. Oh, you wanted me to hesitate. I'm so sorry. No, let me think. I'm still pondering. Is that better? <laughs> The thing is, the number, see... There's so much pressure! There's reasons for both. Yep. Okay, I have a number. I'm, I'm ready. I have a song. Does that help? No. Okay. I have a number. One, two, three, Seven. ten. I was debating between 9.5 and 10. You're low. Why did you go to seven? I just, it's not my thing, but it's, it's easy. It's easy like Sunday morning. So seven. So I looked at this from a couple perspectives. I wanted to go 9.5 and then I said, but what's keeping it from a 10? What is it about this that would keep it from being a 10 for me? And I couldn't come up with anything that I didn't like. And so that's why I gave it a 10 because I could not come up with something about this <laughs> that I didn't like. That's what a 10 is. It's something that you can't find fault with. I don't find... The only fault I have is the sediment in the bottom of the bottle. That's it. Other than that, there's nothing wrong with it. The aroma is not a spot-on thing, but that seems to pass once you start drinking it. I didn't even really yeah, notice I, that anymore. I ignored the pledge after, after it was I started drinking sort it. sort of pledge-like. I'll give it that. But it kind of went away. You know, it was like, I don't even notice the smell anymore now that I'm drinking it. It tasted... It tastes so good. Like... Also, she said, this isn't her wheelhouse. It's more mine. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it really is. Um, even though I'm not big on lemon anything, I like this a lot. Sure. And as far as my obsession of food pairing wines with food, uh, this my would... My Francais stuff. This would totally be perfect, I think, for almost anything applicable. Wait a minute. Didn't I use this to make the white... sauce for a chicken Francais type thing? I think you did. <laughs> yeah. Because you need wine and lemon juice. Yeah. <laughs> All in one. Ta-da! <laughs> Uh, so yeah, any, any of the white wine pairings, I think this would be perfect yeah. with it because the little acidity would, would work well with that. And your chicken francais, the artichoke pasta. Yeah, there's a lot of things that this would pair nicely with. It could even go with desserts. Sure. It has a sweetness level that's, it seems more sweet than it really is. Yeah. So that's why I gave it a seven because it's elevated than beyond just, eh, 
you know, it's definitely not a just a, eh, it's more of a, yeah, sure. Um, but the thought of, I want something to drink, I don't think Skeeter pee is going to come into my head. See, I would, I would think of this now. And that's okay. Now that I know this, I would, I would be like, yeah, I want a mug of that. <laughs> Which so, is kind of unusual for me to do, just so you're aware. Yeah. It, it actually takes quite a bit for me to do that. So make Skeeter pee. Link in the description below of the original making video. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.